This video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, the hit mobile hero collection RPG enjoyed by over 80 million players worldwide. Raid Shadow Legends is what you get when you cross a blockbuster movie with a AAA game and then squeeze it into a mobile phone, and the results were truly revolutionary. If you're anything like me, then you love a good challenge. That's why the bosses in Raid really stood out to me, and here's the three hardest bosses that I came up against and some tips on how to defeat them. Number one, Bommel the Dreadhorn from Doom Tower. This was the hardest boss I encountered in Doom Tower. Why? He's got tons of weapons in his arsenal and he's incredibly accurate with them. Make sure Whirlum Frosting and Vogoth are on your team if you want to defeat Bommel the Dreadhorn. Number two, Dragon from the Dragon's Lair and the Dungeons. Once you defeat this boss, you're going to get some of the best sets in the game, including speed, accuracy, and lifesteal. Getting through his waves is the biggest challenge, so you'll want a team member with the AoE decreased defense, like War Maiden, on your side to defeat the dragon. Number 3, Minotaur from Minotaur's Labyrinth in the dungeons. Here's where you can farm the mastery scrolls to upgrade your champion mastery skills. Choose the champion from the Banner Lords or Barbarians faction, like the Stagnite, Farrakhan the Fat, or Cillian the Lucky to beat the Minotaur. This month Raid's got a huge new update with a ton of new features, including a new dungeon and the introduction of Artifact Ascension. Plus, Raid's got something extra special happening right now. They've released a legendary champion based off MMA and pro wrestling legend Ronda Rousey. You can get Ronda for free right now, whether you're a new or longtime player, just by logging onto Raid. All you've got to do is log in and play the game for 7 days from now until February 20th and Ronda's yours. That's all there is to it. To celebrate Ronda's arrival in Raid, you just enter the special promo code Raid Ronda as one word. It's available for all users new and old to get a bunch of helpful stuff like a 3 day 100% XP boost, 500,000 silver, and 5 full energy refills. Also, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get your exclusive rewards in Raid right now. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click the link in the description box or scan my QR code here on the screen and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion. Rector Draft, 200k silver, 1 energy refill and 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, available for 30 days for new players only. You can download Raid for free right now from the App Store or Google Play. In 2003, the Milwaukee motorcycle company Harley-Davidson celebrated its 100th year anniversary. It was a pretty big deal, and to celebrate, a three-day festival called The Celebration would take place. The three-day festival was full of music, with some of the acts being revealed ahead of time, while others were not. The final day of the festival would see a secret musical lineup and a big-name headliner that was going to be a huge surprise. But once the performer took to the stage, it resulted in a pretty disappointed crowd. That's what we're going to discuss in today's video. I want to first thank one of my subscribers for suggesting this topic as I previously hadn't heard it. Rock stars including Poison, Billy Idol, Joan Jett, and REO Speedwagon performed at the event and were revealed ahead of time. But the final day of the festival, the musical lineup was a mystery. But two weeks before the festival took place, a local publication in Milwaukee, using its sources in the music industry, published a story claiming that Elton John would headline the final day of the festival, writing, and I quote, an odd choice for a biker crowd. Despite the rumors that Elton John would be the likely head Headliner, people around the city either didn't read the article or chose not to believe it. Instead, rumors spread around Milwaukee that the Rolling Stones or Bruce Springsteen would be the headliners. Around 200,000 tickets were given out for the event, mostly through Harley dealerships. Hotel rooms in Milwaukee were booked seven months in advance, and some people who lived in the city left town for the weekend and rented out their homes to visitors from anywhere ranging from $1,500 to $2,000 a night. The final day of the festival, where the secret headliner was revealed, would be called, and I quote, the party. Playing that day was country star Tim McGraw, Kid Rock, the Doobie Brothers, with Elton John headlining. But there were several problems on the final day. The wait for free hot dogs lasted several hours, and the beer ran out before the evening. On Milwaukee.com would write in their review of what happened during Elton John's set, saying, A deafening hush came over the enormous crowd as it realized the big secret was John. Hardly a rocking choice for a group that came to the party. With the Harley folks clad in black, it looked more like a funeral as the stunned crowd stood motionless as John launched into his set 
set of new soft rock tunes and old favorites. Then people started to leave in droves. The reviewer would also note that John's set was also met with a fair amount of booze. The following week, some angry concert goers wrote their displeasure with John headlining the festival, with the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel publishing several letters. One would read, and I quote, Harley Davidson officials need to admit that they screwed up horribly. This was a big, big money maker for Harley Davidson, and Elton John was our reward? What were they thinking? Another concert goer who left the show early would write, It only took the opening chorus to kill the hundred year mystique that made Harley Davidson motorcycles so popular. The last image that several hundred thousand people have in their minds is of Elton John playing his piano under the Harley Davidson logo. The move by the company was such a disaster that he became a shorthand in Milwaukee for something with a huge amount of hype that ultimately proves to be a disappointment. When the Green Bay Packers lost a game where they had a lead against their rival, the Minnesota Vikings, the following month, the Journal Sentinel wrote about the Packers that they, and I quote, fared about as well as Elton at the Harley Bash. Four years later, at an annual meeting, Harley Davidson would discuss their plans for their 105th anniversary. It was at the meeting the company's CEO, Jim Zimer, told attendees that Elton John wouldn't be making an appearance as the news was met with loud applause from the crowd. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you again. Rock and roll your stories, ticker.